This episode is sponsored by Hasa, the trusted choice for liquid chlorine. It's better because it offers the highest purity, works instantly, and contains no added CYA. By the bottom feeder, professional grade battery powered swimming pool vacuum system. It sucks to clean pools, so cleaning pools sucks less. And by Skimmer, trusted by over 30,000 pool service pros across North America, Skimmer software helps you save time, grow a revenue, and boost your five star reviews. Whether you're just starting out or expanding your team, Skimmer's easy-to-use tools and expert support have you covered. Upgrade your business in 2025 with Skimmer. Visit getskimmer.com backslash pool guy today. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. The Pool Guy Podcast Show. Welcome to the best of the Pool Guy podcast show. In these three episodes here, I'm going to go over why a pool is not holding chlorine. I think all three parts are definitely essential in understanding why swimming pools are zeroing out or not holding the proper chlorine level. So I'm going to dive into part one here. And remember, there are two more parts to this best of series on why a pool is not holding chlorine. Join my coaching program and take your pool service to the next level. Connect with other pool pros in your area, gain valuable knowledge, and transform your business with personalized one-on-one advice from me. With over 36 years of experience, I'm here to help you succeed like never before. Learn more at PoolGuyCoaching.com. So let's start with some obvious ones, and then we'll go into the ones that aren't quite as obvious or maybe not quite as obvious to most people. If you've been doing this a while, some of these may be more obvious than others, but I'll start with some of the basic ones, some of the ones that I run into all the time. So the first one is cyanuric acid, either too little cyanuric acid or too much cyanuric acid. And the symptoms are very similar in both cases. And I think it's one of those kind of weird things where if you think about it, if you have cyanuric acid of 200 parts per million, you would think that the chlorine would hold really well in the pool And it will hold really well in the pool with a certain formula. However, if you don't use this formula, it's not going to hold really well. And you're going to have problems with algae. And then the algae will, of course, consume the chlorine. And I think too little cyanuric acid is a problem that a lot of people run into also. So you can have both extremes of the spectrum causing this problem in the pool. The ideal cyanuric acid level is 30 to 50 parts per million. It hasn't changed much over the years. Bob Lauer, if you follow his method, 50 parts per million is his target range for cyanuric acid. It makes calculating the formula that I'm going to give you very easy. And it's something that is relatively new, I think, in the industry, having this formula to apply to high cyanuric acid. But basically, Bob Lauer came up with this formula that your free chlorine level should be 7.5% of your cyanuric acid level. Now, of course, if you add borates to the pool, you can go with 5%. But just for the sake of argument, let's say it's a regular straight chlorine pool. You don't have borates in the water. So your free chlorine level should be 7.5% of the cyanuric acid level for the chlorine to be effective in the water. So if you keep your pool cyanuric acid level at 50 parts per million, you're going to need 3.7 parts per million, 3.75 parts per million of free chlorine for it to be effective. For argument, sake of argument, let's just say you need four parts per million of free chlorine for it to be effective in the pool. Now you're going to lose about one part per million per day roughly in the summer. It all depends on, of course, usage, UV index, things of that like that. But just for argument, you're going to lose one part per million. So you're going to need a constant four parts per million in that pool every day in the summertime if you have your cyanuric acid at 50 parts per million. Now that's really hard to do in a lot of cases, unless you have maybe a saltwater generator, then you may want to bump up your cyanuric acid to 80 parts per million. And there's many reasons for that. But just for the sake of time, the main reason is that since the chlorine comes out of the return jets in one area, the higher cyanuric acid level seems to protect it as it's kind of coming out of a certain area in the pool in a highly concentrated way coming out of the saltwater generator into the pool with the return line. So that's the theory with that. I keep my salt pool at 50 parts per million, so I'm kind of contrary to that theory. There was talk back in the day when saltwater systems first came out that you needed no cyanuric acid 
And this was something that was going around everywhere, basically because we thought, or the thinking was that since it's producing chlorine and injecting it into the pool, that is doing it at so much chlorine is being added to the pool, there's no need to protect it. But now we know that without cyanuric acid, even with a saltwater generator, that chlorine will be used up really quickly by the sun's UV rays and just by, you know, contaminants in the water. So the cyanuric acid is a necessary evil, and too little of it will cause the pool to zero out pretty quickly, probably within a few hours. Too much of it, with not using the right free chlorine ratio, will make the chlorine ineffective in the pool, thereby increasing the chance that algae will form or microalgae will form, and this will consume the chlorine rapidly. So you may have, you know, a pool that has cyanuric acid of 150 parts per million. Let's just keep that as the example here. So if I calculate the, the cyanuric acid at 150 parts per million, and if I do a um, ca quick calculation of 7.5%, the free chlorine level in that pool needs to be over 11 parts per million to be effective. So you can see that that's pretty impossible unless you're adding tons of shock, filling up the floater with four or five tablets in a 15,000 gallon pool to keep that chlorine level at that 11 parts per million. And if it drops below that, and this is where some of the myths about algae being chlorine resistant come about. And I've heard this before where you get to a pool and you're testing it and it's at 10 parts per million, but there's algae growing in the pool and the thought is, well, this this algae must be chlorine resistant, but it's really not because if the cyanuric acid is at 150 parts per million, you're going to need more than 10 parts per million for the chlorine to be effective in the pool. And I remember one pool in particular, when I took this account, I saw the customer had a bunch of tablet buckets back there and he had a bunch of shock. And I was like, this is unusually an unusual amount of product for one pool. It wasn't gigantic, maybe it was like 15,000 gallons. And he was running it on the variable speed pump for a pretty long time, but the pool had a lot of algae. And this is before Bob Lowry, I think, propagated his theory. So I didn't really know what was going on with this pool, but I knew the cyanuric acid was off the chart. So I was just kind of treating the pool as if it was, you know, a normal pool with high cyanuric acid, but it kept getting algae. I kept adding more chlorine to the pool. Now I realize why the customer had so many buckets of empty chlorine and shocked by the side of the pool because he was battling probably cyanuric acid. I mean, when you dilute it and test it, it was well over 200. So it was probably in the three or 400 range of cyanuric acid. And if I had applied this theory that Bob Lowry came up with, the 7.5% of free chlorine to the cyanuric acid level, if it was indeed at 300 parts per million of cyanuric acid, that means that I would have to have put in or kept the free chlorine level every day. And this is the key here. If it dropped one day below this particular amount, then there's a good chance algae would form or the chlorine would be ineffective. But if the cyanuric acid in this pool was at 300 parts per million, I would have to keep the free chlorine level at 22.5 parts per million for it to be effective. And this is one reason why the pool may not be holding chlorine. If the cyanuric acid level is sky high, you're going to need a lot of chlorine just to maintain that pool and keep it in balance. So I think one of the things to note is how high is the cyanuric acid in the pool, and this may be the reason why it's not holding chlorine, or how low is the cyanuric acid in the pool. Again, both of these will affect how the chlorine is held, how the chlorine holds in the pool. If it's too low, it's going to burn off very quickly, and if it's too high, you need large amounts of chlorine to maintain some kind of balance in the water. Now let me switch over to something that you may not think of too often, when you have a pool that's not holding chlorine, or you may have run into this on your route. So if you run into this, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that's the pool that has nitrates in it. Now, how did that nitrate get in the water? Could be just from the rain and runoff from the soil. Could have be something that blows in the pool. I'm not really sure exactly how nitrates make it into some pools. I was scratching my head on one of them. I couldn't figure it out why it was not holding chlorine. But this was after we had this major windstorm and it was an unusually late windstorm. So this pool has oak trees around it and the pool filled up with all the pollen from there. But after that point, I just had a hard time making this pool hold chlorine. No matter what I did, it wouldn't hold chlorine. And I think the nitrates came in during that windstorm with all the debris blowing into the pool. I'm not exactly sure, 
But I know after that windstorm, the pool will not hold chlorine for nothing. So one of the effective ways to test for nitrates is with a test strip. And if you get any level of nitrates in the pool, chances are you're going to have to drain that pool to get rid of them. Because with nitrates in the water, you can be putting in 10 gallons of liquid chlorine one day, 10 bags of calhypo, one pound bags of calhypo the next day, and the pool could be zeroing out because of nitrates in the water. The only effective way to getting rid of the nitrates is to drain the water and start over with fresh water. And if you wanted to try bombing it and curing it that way, you probably can, but the nitrates aren't going to go away. They're going to be in the water still. So draining is the best way, but you can bomb it to kind of break the nitrates, but it's going to be a problem that's going to reoccur in this pool unless you drain it. If you put 20 gallons of liquid chlorine, let's say the pool is 15,000 gallons, you put 20 gallons of liquid chlorine in one day, you go back the next day and do the same thing with 20 gallons of liquid. By the way, this would be really expensive to do in California. It's better off draining the pool at that point. But just as an example, you can do this two days in a row and you can usually break it, but then you may have problems in a month or two again, the chlorine zeroing out. So it's better to drain the pool down if you test the pool for nitrates. And this is a real head scratcher sometimes because you may even be wondering how nitrates got into a pool. It may not have been windy. There may not be any dirt runoff into the pool, but yet the chlorine's zeroing out. You do a nitrate test and it shows up on the test strip that there are nitrates in the water. Then you're going to have to drain that pool and start over with fresh water. So I'm kind of flipping back and forth here with a common problem and something that's not quite common. So I'll go back to another common one, which is not knowing the actual right size of the pool. And this can be something that's difficult to gauge out there. I remember one time I took over this pool and I was kind of eyeballing it. And I'm like, okay, this pool is only 18,000 gallons. I was measuring it by walking around. One thing I failed to do was stick my pole into the deep end like I normally do. I was just lazy and I was just measuring it by walking it. But I didn't realize that the pool was actually nine feet deep. And so my calculations were a little bit off, so to speak. I thought it was six feet deep, my mistake. So there was a lot more water in the pool than I thought. And if you're adding chlorine to a pool and you're not dosing it with enough chlorine to move the parts per million in the right direction, especially in the summer when the UV index is probably high in most areas, and that means that the UV rays are, if you go on like a weather, weather app, you can see the UV index. And if it's really high, that means that the chlorine is going to be destroyed very rapidly by the sunlight, even with cyanuric acid in the water at the right level. It's going to degrade very quickly. And so in this case, if you have a pool that you're measuring wrong, you're off by 4,000 gallons, let's say, like in this case here. If you're adding a gallon of liquid chlorine to it, it may actually require one and a half gallons to get it to a certain parts per million. If you don't get it to a certain parts per million, while you're adding the, the chlorine to bring it back up, it could drop rapidly and zero out. And you're thinking that there is something wrong with the pool. However, it's just your dosing is wrong. And so this is a common problem when you're dosing a pool, especially if you're trying to save money by not overdosing and you're measuring everything specifically. Now, back in the old days, I should say the old days, 2019 is the old days now, when chlorine was really cheap, we really didn't measure it too much. So if the pool needed to be shocked. Putting in two gallons of liquid chlorine was not a big deal or three pounds of cow hypo. Now with the price is so high, you really have to be mindful of overdosing the pool for no reason. And at the same time, you can underdose the pool by being too mindful of the chemical use. So common problem, it's just not adding enough chlorine to bring that free chlorine up to where it needs to be. So if the pool's at one parts per million, you're looking at an app like the pool calculator and you have the wrong pool size and you add you know, half a gallon of liquid chlorine, you may have needed to add one gallon and it's not moving the parts per million up high enough. The UV index is high in the summer and the chlorine is being used up or destroyed and you feel like you're just you know, spinning your wheels. You may just want to add more chlorine, recalculate the size of the pool, especially if you have it wrong, you want to make sure you adjust for that. And then you want to add the proper amount of chlorine. And I usually go over what they're calling for. So if they ask for a gallon of liquid chlorine, to bring it up to, let's say, five parts per million, I'll add a gallon and a half just to be safe. Even in this day of high chlorine costs, I always like to err on adding more chlorine to the pool than less chlorine. So that could be a problem, underdosing the pool when you need to bring the free chlorine level back up. So that's a very common problem. And so an uncommon one would be using chlorine that is expired or is really weak. And this is something that happens, especially with liquid 
If you get it maybe at the 99 cent store, you're buying bleach. Or if you're getting it at the store, maybe Home Depot, and the employee doesn't rotate the liquid chlorine, it can be a lot weaker. Or if you're storing a case of liquid chlorine in your backyard and the sun's hitting it all day, this could also weaken the chlorine. Or living it in the back of your truck and the sun's hitting it all day long as you're doing your pool route, this can degrade the liquid chlorine. And sometimes you don't even notice it. But if you're using 12.5 liquid chlorine and you leave it maybe on the side of your house for a month, the sun's hitting it, it may be at 9% or 8% after that one month. And the chlorine will get to its half-life of about 6% pretty rapidly within a few months, depending on how you store it. And this is something you may not think about because you're not really thinking about the degradation of the liquid chlorine or bleach. But if you ever do laundry and you have a gallon of bleach and let's say six months pass by and you go to use it to do some laundry, you'll notice that it has very little effect because pretty much it's, it's half the strength of what it was prior to that or less than half the strength. So this is something that you may want to check if you're using all liquid chlorine. You want to make sure you rotate it. And you may want to make sure that you're using it up fast. You're not buying old chlorine at the pool store or the hardware store. You want to make sure it's as fresh as possible because this is a problem that you're going to run into where you're dumping it in the pool. And if it's at 6% and you thought it was 12.5% and you're looking at an app to calculate how much to add, you'd have to add twice as much chlorine at that rate because it has degraded to that point. So make sure you're using fresh chlorine, especially the liquid chlorine. I wouldn't say that the Cal Hypo or the Dichlor or the tablets will degrade over time. But if you do find a bag of Cal Hypo that's like five years old, I think you're going to have a problem with that. And how do I know this? I was at a customer's house one time and they had Cal Hypo in their garage. And I would say it was about five years old from the look of the bag. And I put it in the pool just to see what would happen. And it definitely was weaker, but I think the shelf life of Cal Hypo is anywhere from two to three years. So you would have a hard time finding expired Cal Hypo unless you found it at the bottom of someone's garage. But liquid chlorine is something to keep an eye on because that can be weaker over time than the other chlorine types. I think I'll stop here and I'll continue with a part two to this, talking about other reasons why the pool can't hold chlorine. If you're looking for other podcasts, you can find those by going to my website, swimmingprolearning.com. On the banner, click on the podcast icon, and there'll be a drop-down menu of over 1,500 podcasts there for you to listen to at your leisure. And if you're interested in my coaching program, you can learn more about that at poolguycoaching.com. And thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week, and God bless. This episode is brought to you by Hasa, providing products that deliver clean, healthy water for every aspect of everyday life. The bottom feeder battery powered vacuum system, portable, powerful, and only weighs 12 pounds. And Skimmer. Get Skimmer, America's number one pool service software. Podcast listeners can try Skimmer for free at getskimmer.com backslash pool guy.